Everybody, welcome back to Northern Land. Please, why guys again? Everyone's win streak of one. Hey, man. What does a two win streak and a 1,000 win streak have in common? They both had to get the first win, which we just already got, but they had to keep it going. Anyway, JFPJ Q6 QX. It's a seed consisting exclusively of Audi models. Can I tell you something? I'm a millennial. I'm still getting used to the fact that there is uh, a generation younger than myself. I, I mean, I guess there's two, the, the Zoomers and the Generation Alphas, but, like, you know what I mean. Like, I'm still, even at 31, I'm still getting used to the fact that there's, like, you know, a generation of adults younger than me out there on Earth. I'm still, like, I'm the youngest, though. Which is why I feel... Let's get weird. Let's let's take that one. It didn't work out very well, to be honest. Um, I know you're like, where are you going with this bizarre bit? Just hear me out here. I don't know what part of the car is the make. What part of the car is the part of the car is the model? And at this point, I'm afraid to ask. Everybody always just throws it out there: make and model, make and model. Which one's the make? Which one's the model? Like uh, Ford is the make and the focus is the model? Why do we say make instead of manufacturer? I'm just, I, it's not a big deal. It's just one of those things I was never uh, actually taught. I always just went, you know, make and model, forward focus. It's not that big of a deal. You know, I'm not trying to like start a revolution with a single keystroke. But if you're out there as well, and you're going, I was wondering when somebody was going to ask it. Hey, I'll ask it. I'm not afraid to ask the stupid questions. Like, I still... Let's keep this one a little under wraps. You know, whenever we go through the Canada-US border um, by driving, they always go, hey, do you have anything to declare? And I always go, like, I, I always go no, because we don't bring over, like, illegal things. But I never know, like, what what does that mean? What does it mean to declare something? Like, if we buy $20 gifts for both of our nieces, do we have to declare that? Like, and I'm being 100% sincere. Like, I, I understand it's not doing anything wrong, but I'm more just like, what do you want me to say? I never went to the class that is like, this is what declare means in this context. And I've crossed the Canada-US border 500 times. <laughs> Now, I solved my own problem by just not leaving myself in a gray area to begin with, but there have been times where I was like... Like, sometimes Kate and I will, like, go through a drive through on the way down when we're driving to our in-laws' place, and I'm like, well, you're not allowed to bring, like, you know, food and veg or fruit and vegetables over the border, but, like, you have, like, a blueberry muffin. Is that okay? <laughs> Is it... Well, and I know that this is, it's the very peculiar way that my brain works, where I'm so anal about being as specific and unambiguous in my language as possible that it makes me insufferable. But it says, like, on the declaration card, it's like, are you bringing in fruits and vegetables? Whenever I'm like, you know, well, I have like a blueberry... I have a bottle of apple juice, they're like, that's not what that means. Well, why don't you write, like, you know commoditized fruits and vegetables or like, you know, raw fruits and vegetables or like, you know, agricultural products. Because fruits and... Do I have fruits and vegetables? Yeah! I had, uh... a kale salad for lunch. And there's a little bit of kale in my, uh... duodenum right now. I mean, that's... I'm not trying to be... I'm not being ridiculous just to be ridiculous, but... You know, there's consequences to, to answering the questions wrong. <laughs> but instead, I just am like, uh, no. And then they're like, okay, go ahead. I understand, like, it's their job, but I'm also like... What I don't want to... I would much rather be overly specific and have them be like, haha, we didn't mean that. 
then be not specific enough and then they take an x-ray and they go yo are those blueberries in your small intestine and i'm like yeah i didn't think you meant it like that and then they're like it says any fruit or vegetable and i'm like yeah and they're like do you know what the word any means and i'm like now you're just being insulting okay okay dun 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 Did you pop that first dun 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 Yum, dun, dun, dun. Yum, dun. Excuse me! I was flying! I guess I hadn't gotten to that point yet. We are not going to go to the curse room because uh, we do not wish to face death. Pretty good setup for this run now, though. There's no doubt about that. I mean, this could kill us very, very easily. Now it will not. We just got ourselves angled into a good spot. I will admit, I do get annoyed when people... And I, I don't always say what I mean. Sometimes you get lazy with language, right? But sometimes I get annoyed... Verbally, not so much. But when you write something down on a form, and it's written down ambiguously, I'm like, you have professional, like, employees that wrote this, and nobody went like... Hey, this is open to interpretation. Like, if you're gonna write it on a form, just just get it right. I know it's like a forehead moment, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. You know, like, don't wear white after Labor Day. You know that old... Uh, Expression that absolutely nobody under the age of 900 uh, listens to anymore. Just suck it up. Let's get weird. Phrasing. <laughs> it's like every day is after Labor Day. Except for things that happened before the first ever Labor Day. I don't understand. Regardless, though. Moving on. <laughs> it's still... It's a... It's a Sunday over here. Just having a nice little chill Isaac recording session series. Um, we're spiced. It's it's a spiced zone. This is a zone of spice. Um, I should very much like to get a tinted rock. I would love to get a, a shop and a key. Both of those appeal to me greatly. No, no, no. You will stay on the other side of oblivion. That was... that You will not believe what I'm about to say. Some incredible planning went into the dodges on this room. These guys can so easily hit you. I kind of had to kite them to the, the corner of the room. Do you think uh, this is shop access? No greed? No... Ooh, you mad genius! You've gotten incredibly lucky. Yes, but also... I mean, to, to fish for the secret room there. That was a, a rare stroke of brilliance, dare I suggest. A rare stroke of brilliance. Thank God. Um, we can go into our item room. We still can't go into our shop. We can go into the item room. I would love to get a key. Okay, now we can go into the shop. I think you should always try that. Oh, do not by accident purchase broken freaking uh, remote. Let's buy this. Let's buy this. Let's even buy this. And it's the greatest value the world has ever seen. Okay, we're looking a lot better now. You know, we probably should have saved the bomb because there's a 15 cent bomb situation there. That's an easy spacebar item play. Still haven't gotten anything amazing, but we're working on it. We're working on it. I wish I had more going dawn. Uh, going dawn? <laughs> I've, I've spoken too much already today. Between other videos and streams, my... I know it's ironic when I was talking about ambiguous communication. My The language centers of my brain, the Broca's area and the Wernicke's area. They're in a world of hurt right now. I don't know why. Uh, let's suck that up. 
more luck upgrades. They'll pay dividends eventually. Honestly, Northern Lion on eight hours of sleep sounds like a, a Rhodes Scholar. Northern Lion on six and a half hours of sleep, it sounds like he's learning the English language for the first time. Had one of those nights last night where, like, as I was going to bed, I was like, I don't really... I, and I, I struggle sometimes with how much of this is then a self-fulfilling prophecy from having that intrusive thought, but I'm like, I don't think I'm going to sleep that well tonight. Wouldn't you know it. For the first time in, like, a uh, couple of months, I was like, hey, Audible, turn off in 45 minutes. Started listening to an audiobook. I was still awake when it turned off. I was like, yo, this is... I didn't even know this could happen. <laughs> Normally, I'm out like a light. All right. Ooh, I could, that's a luck upgrade, you fool. You fool. I'm not really... Compl it's not like a huge deal, but... I'm just throwing it out there. You know what I did watch last night was, uh, Kate and I watched this little, it's probably like a half hour long documentary on YouTube about, like, real Japanese geishas who are, like, you know, young women who are, uh, entertainers. And I, I don't use that term, like, in a loaded sense, you know? They, like, genuinely, it's, it's bizarre to me, but they are, like, professional guests that... Uh, like, rich patrons hire to hang out and entertain at events. Japan is so interesting. And Kate watches a lot of YouTube, a lot more than I do. And uh, she comes across these channels all the time. Like, there's a real interest in Japanese culture, particularly online, I think. But it's like, for so many people, it's like a bucket list destination. And it's like... Uh, you know, a once-in-a-lifetime vacation sort of thing, and, uh, you know, we're lucky enough to have gone uh, multiple times. I will also say, because we live on the West Coast, it's a lot easier to make the trip. I know that sounds like it wouldn't matter that much, but I'll tell you, having gone to Asia from essentially America's East Coast um, back when I lived in Ontario, and then going in, you know from Vancouver, it's, a, for one, substantially cheaper, and secondly, like, it's a much easier ordeal, let me put it that way. Like, you know what it is from Vancouver? You get on a plane, you land. You're there. You know what it was when I lived in Ontario? Uh... Me and my parents drove to Toronto the night before my flight, woke up at like 5.30 in the morning, uh, drove to the airport, I got on a flight that went from Toronto to Chicago, landed, had like a 15 minute connection, flew from Chicago to Seoul, to be fair, I mean, that's where most people's trip would probably, you know, be at its destination, but then I had to get on like another like 40 minute flight from Seoul to Daegu and I b between the travel time the layovers and the time zones it was like it was like I left at 6 a.m. on a Tuesday I landed at like 9 p.m. on a Friday and I was like it contributed to the sense of like I have transported myself into a different dimension <laughs> It was also, it's such a, it's so weird that it was only in 2010, uh, but the world seems uh, so different. Like now, hold on, we'll, we'll at least take it. I don't really want to suck up Book of the Dead, I'd rather suck up whatever that passive is. Now, if your parents were like, you know, contact me when you land, what would you do? Well, you would just, you know, take out your phone and be like, I landed. Back then... You know, in 2009, 2010, sorry, not everybody owned a cell phone. I owned a cell phone, but it, it's, it was on a different network. Like, I, 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 it's gonna sound weird, but like at the time, Korea used like a different satellite network. 
So I, I left my phone in Ontario because I was also like, I don't want to pay the phone plan while I'm gone for like a whole year, right? Um, so after I landed, uh, I went to like a convenience store and I didn't speak Korean. And I was trying to ask the dude who worked at the convenience store to like, do you have calling cards? I don't even know <laughs> at this point what a calling card is. I probably knew back then. It's like it's it's like a prepaid credit card you could use on a payphone <laughs> or something. Like it's great this this happened 10 years ago. That's not that long ago. Anyway, he was like, "I don't uh know what you're talking about. I imagine that's what he said anyway." So I I just kept walking around until I found an internet cafe. I signed in uh to my personal email accounts in this shared location and then emailed my mom and I was like, hey, just so you know, I'm alive and safe. Like now, I mean, to be honest, part of this is on my parents because, uh, well, no, it isn't really. Because you might be like, why didn't you just talk to them like on Skype or something like that? Well, because my apartment didn't have Wi-Fi. Like I had to get, uh, once I got settled, which was like a week later, I had to call uh, the internet people and have them install the internet. So like it's not I didn't even have internet access They didn't have a phone to roam. It was like it had to send a message by like carrier pigeon or something Nowadays my mom would like I mean she was probably having like a heart attack at the time but You know my mom will be like hey text me when you get home like four seconds after I get home. She's like are you home? Back then it was like oh, yeah, I landed 18 hours ago anyway it's, it's a different era. <laughs> and even then, you know, that was 2010. It was pretty easy to travel. You know, that's why... I think that's part of the reason, like... History interests me. Is that nowadays... Things are relatively easy when it comes to, like, interfacing with other countries. Can you imagine, like... Like, being on a, a, a boat? You're, like, sailing across the Pacific Ocean. And then you're like... Yo, Captain, there's some land. And then, you know, you look at it and you're like, there's people on the land and they look nothing like any people I've ever seen before. And they're speaking a language I don't understand. They're wearing garb that I've never seen. You know, like... <coughs> pardon me. Like, it's a really unique time in, in human history. That must have been an, an unbelievable, like an indescribable feeling. To be like, I thought today we were exclusively going to see water. Instead, it turns out I've discovered that there are like, you know, 15 million people that nobody from my continent has ever encountered before that have also built up their own civilization and society. But that really, that loops back around to what I was going to talk about. Japan is like, is such an interesting country culturally, I think because... It has, like, all the conveniences and trappings of, like, you know, modern life. But simultaneously was, like... It's it's still, like, so traditional and unique that it's kind of, like... It's it's one of a kind, you know what I mean? We're, we're in a spicy spot here. Mostly because we haven't gotten a single damage upgrade, but... Hold on, do I have water? Like, two drops. It's like, look, I live in Canada. Uh, when I go to the U.S., I'm like, hey, things are like slightly different here, but pretty much exactly the same. When I go to, uh, you know, I went to Sweden. I, I was like, look, don't if, if you're Swedish, please don't take offense to this. I'm not saying Swedes copied Canadian culture. If anything, it definitely flows the other way. But I was like, I get it, you know. We're eating a lot of, you know, meat, fish, and potatoes, and, you know, we both love Peter Forsberg. Iceland was a little different, I'll admit, but Iceland is also, it's kind of like, it has a lot of influence from continental Europe, a lot of influence from, uh, you know, the Baltic nations, of course, which makes perfect sense, and uh, some North American influence as well, you know. I didn't really feel like I, I was in, like, a, a foreign land, if that makes sense. Even Korea, you know, when I was there, I was like... 
Culturally, there, there are differences without a doubt, but I was also like, I kind of feel like I get it. Still Japan, I'm like, man, this is wild. The geisha thing is, is totally foreign to me. I will admit that I'm like, I'm like watching these Japanese businessmen like hire people to laugh at their jokes, and I'm like, it must be a cultural difference to some extent, or maybe it's a generational difference, but I was like, man, I wouldn't be able to look at myself in the mirror. <laughs> After I did this, I want to be clear, I'm not looking down on the culture or making fun of the culture. It's more just like, I mean, I don't fit it in my own culture to a large extent as well. Some of the things that people enjoy doing, I'm like, oh, that's not for me. I don't even think we want to suck this up, to be honest. I got, the charge is worth more to me. That's helpful. That and like, they were showing, and, and again, I am a, a neophyte, I am an idiot, right? Just like an absolute simpleton. And uh, they were showing off like, the Japanese art of Ikebana is the process of artfully arranging flowers so as to convey emotions, such as the changing of the seasons. And then they showed this geisha, she was like assembling flowers, and then a teacher came by and was like, it looks good, but your rose is not centered enough. The rose is the most vibrant part of the piece, and so it should be in the center. And I was like, who died and made you the arbiter of the best way to arrange flowers, madam? <laughs> I don't know if maybe that, because that to me feels very North American. Is the idea that after you arranged it, if someone was like, well, your flower should be centered, you would be like, I don't want the flower to be centered. I want the flower over here to show that I don't, you know, fit in with this kind of blah blah. You get what I mean? Wow, that was very smart of me right there. They also showed like this, this dance that um, the geishas were doing. And I was like, man, it, it conjured a thought in my head and it was... I, I'm not a dancer, I can't dance. And and by can't, I mean I've never learned, but... I'm, I'm like the typical, like... Nerd dancer. And by that I mean... When I was a, a pre-teen... And you know, early teenager and school dances started... I would unironically be like, ah, I wish I grew up in an era where... People were doing swing dances. Instead of all this, uh... All this grinding. Nowadays I'm like, that's hilarious. <coughs> but, you know, we did like a ballroom dance lesson in, uh, or unit in 8th grade, and I was like, finally, this is my time to shine. And you know what? Shine I did. They don't call me Twinkle Toes for no reason. They call me Twinkle Toes because I walk on my toes. But they also call me Twinkle Toes after that because I did well in the lesson. Anyway. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a particularly good dancer, but I started to think as they were doing this, like, dance on the stage. It's like, what did dancers think about when they're dancing? Because I was, I was starting to laugh, and Kate was like, you know, it's kind of insensitive to laugh at this. And I'm like, well, I'm not laughing because the dance looks funny. I'm laughing because I'm picturing them doing this, like, really solemn and serene dance. But they're, like, at work. So they're thinking about, like, ah... Can't wait till this dance is over so I can get home and eat my leftovers, you know? And they're doing this dance that's like... The dance of the chrysanthemum was, you know, blah blah blah. In their head... Well, in their head, in my head... I'm like, they're probably like, ah... Can't wait to get this wig off. It's so uncomfortable. I, I, I know, I feel like I can't take it seriously, right? It's... But there, some art I, I've I've grown to appreciate, and some art I'm like, eh. Like the AK Bana stuff. I'll just tell you, I don't appreciate floral design at all. Like I'm still at the stage of art appreciation, where like I, I've been to art galleries and museums, and uh, sometimes, very very rarely, I can look at a piece and be like, wow, this is like really actually evoking like some some thoughts for me most of the time i just go eh, pretty picture sometimes i go eh, i could paint that and sometimes like when we were in uh london 
like five years ago. I could appreciate the art on like a historical level. I was like, oh my god, this painting is 400 or, you know, 800 years old. It's amazing. Do you guys just not die? Is that what's happening here? One of you has to die first. Does green have to die first? Dude, what's happening? Does red have to die first? What what happened to this game? <laughs> I still don't really we had like a bumbo situation there. Do you... We shouldn't have done that. If that was paralysis, we could have died. Okay, we made it. Um, still very spiced though, with with three point five damage, which is honestly like for all of the attribute gaining we've done with void, we should be higher than that. Just level with me on that one. Don't get me wrong, by the way. I appreciate all the work that goes into becoming an artist. I mean that sincerely. I just it it doesn't it doesn't hit the right parts of my brain. Like like movies hit it. Music hits it. Writing hits it. I haven't gotten to the point yet where like, you know, a painting can hit it. Perhaps one day. Now if I ever get to the point that a dance hits it. That's where I'm like I've I've ascended cuz I don't I don't know if I got that in me to be honest. The only way I can appreciate it at the present moment is it's like the same way as painting. Like I watched a I've watched two ballets in my life. Both times I was like wow, they're like really strong. That's crazy. Like I it's, I have to come up with like ancillary questions to to keep myself occupied. And go through ridiculous charades in my head. Farces. Like, I wanna, you're doing like the dance of the sugar plum fairies. But I bet in your head you're like, I can't wait to get home. Cause I got better call Saul on PVR. Dunka dunka dun. Gotta know what happens to Chuck on season four, episode one. Dunka dunka dun. Screw it, dude. Rather go out with the bottle in front of me than the frontal lobotomy. That's uh, a Tom Waits quote. Didn't not necessarily applying to uh, deals with the devil. I had kind of a crisis the other day. Uh, I was listening to. Tom Waits, Nighthawks at the Diner, the best live album ever made. And it occurred to me that I hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll save that anecdote. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. I'm just going to be honest with you. Like, we could have played better, but at the same time, 3.5 damage on the chest is a dang, or on the cathedral is a dang nightmare. Either way, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya.